Hi guys, I'm Stuki and today I'm at the Faculty of Soul Science of Moscow State University in the very heart of soul science. Let's see what uh, the schedule of soul scientists today. Hmm, is it colloidal chemistry or general soul science? Well, all right, you can look for yourself if you, if you want, but I want to move on to the third floor to the Department of General Soil Science. So who remembers these places? Have you ever been here? Maybe you studied here? Okay, write in the comments. But if you have never been here, now I will show you what interesting things you can see. A real soil exhibition organized here. For example, this is Kashtan Azyom. It's found in dry steps. For example, in Russia you can find its, uh, such soils in Kalmykia, Volgograd, Saratov regions, Buratia and so on. These soils are forming conditions on, of very insufficient moisture and poor vegetation. There is a separate stand with interesting exhibits of what can be found in the soil. This, for example, a piece of surface of Solonchak, a salt marsh soil in which there are a lot of so soluble salts and it is not really easy for plants to live in such cells. Only some halophytes can live there. And this interesting jewel-like ball is a spherical noodles of silicon oxides with lizzy gunk rings. These are the specific concentric rings that are produced when these deposits form. The ball on the left is a ground beetle nest from the brown soils of China. And these noodles found near pyramids of Cheops in Egypt. There is a whole stand of various form of accumulation of iron and other compounds in the soils. So you can even see gypsum druze from Turkmenistan. In general, all these pebbles and strange things, this is what you can find inside the soil if you dig deep there. This is the so-called new formations or, or soil inclusions. For example, such river alluvium or alluvial hard pan from Egypt or beautiful gypsum druze, mm, this also look like stone roses. But these stripped things on the left, similar to chips, are just Egyptian alluvium and they form next to the river, such hard surfaces. Black and brown thing to the right is a petrified wood. Interestingly, the process of the process of petrification takes place underground. For example, a tree turned out to be underground and water with various mineral substances flows through it. And gradually this water enters the cells of the wood and the wood itself declays and only sediment remains. For example, quartz. And this quartz repeats the original structure of the tree. And accordingly, petrified the tree, in fact, already a stone. Nothing remains from the tree, but the structure of tree has been preserved. For a soil scientist, of course, it's very important to know the rocks. So soil scientists study geology very seriously. Here, for example, is an interesting stand of metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic are those that have occurred by changing the original igneous or sedimentary rocks. And igneous rocks, they're actually those that you see now. They appear, relatively speaking, from magma. And then metamorphic ones can already appear from them if they're affected by different physical chemical conditions. This collection is certainly not the widest, but there is more ex extensive collection of rocks in the main building. But it's also pretty interesting. There is a stand with a solid phase of atmospheric precipitation that is uh, for example, it rained, but what else fell out with it? I also really like the idea of how soils were placed in cups in, at our faculty soil science. For example, this is abrasiums. These are soils that do not have upper diagnostic horizons because, for example, they have weathered or disappeared by anthropogenic means. Here also very interesting anti-erosion exhibits. Nets on the soil surface, which can be placed on a slope so that the soil does not fly away. And nearby there are seeds of the so-called biomats. That is plants from which you can plant a surface that will also be anti-erosion. Here is such a corner of cute little soil signs with a hedgehog, cones and drawings. The most innovative part of the exhibition is these glasses in which the soil was placed. You can literally collect a mini soil cross-section in a glass. You get a soil smoothie or, or soil cocktail. <laughs> Here you see a podzol, a wonderful demonstration and at the same time 
an interesting idea of how you can make such illustrative materials in a soil science. Another cool exhibit is a pretty fresh 2013 soil monolith from Palibina, Russia. This is the soil from our zonal practice, where students go to study the soils of different soil zones in Russia. They brought here such a nice soil monolith with a very interesting feature of morphology. Look at this black circle down here. This is not just some kind of drawn circle, this is a real molehill, the root of a mole. The mole moved in the, in the soil and brought the upper horizon down, leaving a trail behind it. By the way, this is Nick. Hello! A few years ago he brought a similar soil monolith to the World Soil Museum in the Netherlands. You can find a video about this. Also, this exhibition contains various soil inclusions. Everything that you read about in the textbooks of soil morphology, here you can see with your own eyes. All this looks very interesting, much more interesting than in the photographs or pictures. Oh, look, this is a bone of some kind of maybe even dinosaur. Hmm, this is from Egypt. And the most amazing thing that all these pebbles and unusual things are actually found in soils. This is a real invention of nature because it all looks fantastically beautiful. On my way back I met Nick who was looking at additional soil exhibits. These are soil racks that are filled with soil monoliths. Now it's time to go to a new expedition to bring new soil monoliths for the museum. Hope you enjoyed this video. Write comments, what do you think? See you!